Our first decor dupe is from the Paragold website. It's this beautiful ceramic decorative bowl. I loved the raised 3D flowers and the size and shape of the bowl. Originally, this bowl was $230. However, it is on sale right now for $116. And as much as I love this bowl, that is still too much for me to pay. So we're gonna create our own. The first thing that we need is our own bowl. Now, one place I like to look to find affordable bowls is in the party section. They have plastic bowls, punch bowls, serving bowls, and they're typically just a few dollars. In the party section of Hobby Lobby, I found a plastic bowl there. It's a similar size and this bowl has ridges around it, which gives it character. And the price is right at only $3.99. The biggest challenge recreating this dupe was figuring out a way to get those 3D flowers. Well, while I was in the party section, I wandered down the aisles and I came across the chocolate molds. I found two sets. One had very similar flowers and the other had leaves. And each one of these molds was only $1.99. We are not going to be putting chocolate in these molds. Instead, we are going to be filling them up with hot glue. So I laid out my molds and I got my hot glue. I filled up the mold with the hot glue. You're going to want to make sure that the mold is completely filled to the top with the hot glue. Get that hot glue in all of those nooks and crannies so you get an exact replica of the flower. You could even give it a little tap to make sure that you got all the bubbles out and that the hot glue is settled as well. Once my flowers were created, I moved on and did the exact same things with the leaves. I filled them up with the hot glue. I made sure that the entire mold was filled so I could get all the details on the leaves. You don't need to wait very long for this hot glue to solidify. I waited maybe 10 minutes and then I just popped them out. They came flying out. They did not stick in these molds at all. You can see how fantastic these hot glue flowers and leaves are. The details on these 3D botanicals are very visible. They turned out so good. Next, I needed to create some stems on my bowl. So I took my hot glue and I started at the bottom and I created these stems. I brought my stems up and branched them out in several different directions. I created branches that went around the perimeter of the entire bowl. Once they were all created, I let them solidify for five to 10 minutes. Now I'm going to add my 3D flowers and leaves to the bowl with what else but hot glue. So I added hot glue to the back of my flowers and leaves and pressed them to the bowl at the top of the branches. I placed them in similar areas as my inspiration piece. I added these flowers and leaves to the outside of the bowl until the perimeter had been filled with these beautiful flowers and leaves. You can probably guess that we are going to paint it next, but before we do that, we need to remove all of the hot glue strings that are on the bowl. If we leave the strings on there, when we go to paint it, it will highlight the strings. So I just went through and I wiped off all of those hot glue strings so that my bowl was nice and clean. The paint that we are going to be using on our bowl is this Krylon satin paint. I'm not using a high gloss because our inspiration piece is ceramic and so that's more muted. So this paint is going to work well. I made sure that the entire perimeter of our bowl was coated in this paint. I did the outside and the inside of the bowl until it was saturated in this paint. Once it was painted, I let it dry for one hour. This white paint really highlights those flowers and leaves and all the details on them. You couldn't see them very well before, but now after being painted, it highlights those intricate details. This bowl, exceeded my expectations, you guys. It looks so beautiful and so similar to our inspiration piece. Look at how pretty those flowers are on there and those leaves, they look like they were always a part of this bowl. Let's put my bowl right up next to the inspiration bowl. You can see how similar they are. One very big difference between them is the price. After calculating all the costs that went into creating my bowl, the grand total was $12.97. That is a great price. That's over a $100 savings 
I love my bowl. It's bright, cheerful, and also classy and unique. This inspiration piece is a decorative box from Kathy Kuo. I love the gold accents along the top and the bottom, the gold feet, and the decorative handle. What I do not like is the price of $320. That's too expensive and I know that we can make one for less. So the first thing that we need is a box. While I was out shopping at Michael's, I came across the clearance section. I found these large wooden gift card boxes. They were a great size and the price was fantastic. They were only $10 a piece. There were a few very obvious changes that needed to be made to this box. The first being the color. It was far too dark. This mahogany color is not gonna work out, so we are going to paint it white. Before we paint our box, we need to remove the latch. This latch is okay, but I know that we can find something better. So I simply got my screwdriver and I took this latch off the box. Now there are holes left over. The easy solution is just to get some wood putty and putty up those holes. That's exactly what I did. Once the wood filler was in the holes, I let it dry for about 30 minutes and then I came back and I sanded it down so it was nice and smooth. I took my box outside and I got some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. Because the original color was a dark mahogany, I needed to spray a fair amount of white paint on the box to make sure that the original color would not bleed through. Once the box was 100% coated in the white spray paint, I let it dry for two hours. Our inspiration piece had some gold accents on the top and the bottom. We are going to recreate that with some gold leaf rub and buff. I purchased mine at Hobby Lobby. I've also purchased the rub and buff on Amazon in the past. So what I'm gonna do in order to get really straight lines is grab some blue painter's tape. The blue painter's tape will provide me a straight outline. And as a bonus, when I go to remove the painter's tape, it won't peel off the white spray paint. I made sure that the blue painter's tape was pressed firmly to the box so that I would get crisp, clean lines. I took the gold rub and buff and a rag and I added a dab of the gold rub and buff to the rag. I simply continued to add more rub and buff to the rag and then dabbed it onto the box in between the painter's tape. I went along the entire top of the box and once it was completely coated, I moved on to the bottom. I added more rub and buff in between the exposed portion. Once I was done with the first pass, I inspected the gold and I could see that there were some areas that were a little bit lighter than others. So all I needed to do was get a little bit more of that gold rub and buff and go over it once again. This will give me a really saturated gold color, which will stand out. This rub and buff acts more like wax than paint. So you don't have to wait very long for it to dry. So I waited maybe 15, 20 minutes and then I could remove the blue painter's tape. Now I made sure that I had something underneath my box as I was removing it because when you remove the blue painter's tape, the rub and buff will flake off. So you wanna make sure it doesn't go everywhere. But look at how crisp and sharp these lines are. These lines look professional. They are pristine and well-defined. Next, we're gonna add the knob to the box. Our inspiration box had a hanging knob. You can buy these at Hobby Lobby very affordably. I saw some there. I actually picked up two, which we are going to be using in another project. However, for this box, I found something that I liked even better at Ross. These are quartzite and they have a beautiful gold accent around it. I love the natural, almost marble look of these. So I'm going to be veering off just a little bit and we're gonna be using these knobs instead. So I got my drill and I drilled a hole through the center of the lid. Then I took my quartz knob and I put it through the hole. Then I threaded the washer and the nut onto the screw to hold it in place. I personally love this knob so much better. It looks classy, clean, very elegant, and adds a bit of a modern touch as well. The final addition that we need to make to our box is to add some feet. Now, a couple weeks ago, I did a thrift flip and I turned a container that I purchased at the thrift store into a beautiful planter for my flowers. And I added some feet to that container. What they were were some doll heads that I purchased at Michael's. So I went back to Michael's 
This time I'm purchasing some smaller round doll heads. These are perfect because they're round but they have a flat part at the top. So I took these wood rounds outside and I sprayed them in some gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I made sure that they were completely covered in the gold spray paint. Once they were 100% coated, I let them dry for one hour. I flipped my box upside down and then I got some E6000. I added the E6000 to the wood rounds and then I placed them on each of the four corners of my box. Once everything was in place, I let this dry overnight. We are done with our box. Look at how pretty this is. I love it. The size is huge. It's elegant. I love the gold accents on it. The knob is so classy and adds a bit of a modern touch. I love how it's elevated with the feet. And one thing that I did not change about my box was I left this little slit at the top for cards. I figured I could use this for a party. People could put cards in here or some advice. So I did actually contemplate closing this up, but I'm glad that I didn't because not only is this box decorative, I can actually use it as a functional piece during a party. As a reminder, our inspiration box was from Kathy Quo when it was $320. To calculate my cost, I am going to be prorating things. So for instance, I only used one knob and I only used four of the wood rounds. So I'm gonna take that into consideration. To create my box, it cost me $23.50. What a great deal. We saved $206.50 over our inspiration piece. That's a bargain and I love the way that this looks. I love the look of a resin tray. I think they are so pretty, but I don't know how to use resin. So we are going to be creating our own version of this beautiful resin tray that I saw on Etsy. I love the florals and the leaves encased inside this tray. The handles are beautiful and the size is just right. This tray, however, comes in at a whopping price of $549, which is too much for me to pay. So we are going to make our own. The first thing that we need is a tray. I found my tray at Target. It's the same size as the 12 by 12, but my tray is only $6. Now we need some flowers. This is where you can get really creative. You can use some dried flowers, you can use artificial flowers, or like me, you can find some paper flowers. At Hobby Lobby down the scrapbook aisle, there are packages of fabric and paper flowers. Each package was $6.99, but they were 40% off. And these botanicals are very similar in color and design to our inspiration piece. Our inspiration piece has some gold handles. We are going to be using some handles that I already have. If you look at the buffet, you can see that the handles are acrylic and gold. I'm going to be using some leftover handles. These are from Amazon and they are the same shape as our inspiration piece, but I like mine a little bit better. So let's get started on our tray. We are going to begin by putting the handles on. I'm going to drill two holes on either side of my tray. I measured each side and I marked where I needed to drill the holes. I put some blue painter's tape on each side. The reason why I'm doing this is because when I make the hole, I don't want it to splinter or crack. So the blue painter's tape will help offset that. So once it was all measured, I took my Athena drill and I drilled the holes into the tray. Once I was finished with the first side, I removed the blue painter's tape and then I flipped my tray over and added the blue painter's tape to the other side because it's already measured out perfectly. And then I took the drill and I drilled two more holes on the other side. Then I screwed my Lucite and Gold poles into the holes that we had created. Already, this tray looks so much more expensive simply by adding these handles. I'm gonna do a quick dry run with my scrapbook flowers. I laid them out first, the leaves and the flowers, just to make sure that I knew exactly where I wanted them to be. Once I had the design I wanted, I got some hot glue and I added the hot glue to the back of the flowers and the leaves. Because the hot glue is semi-permanent, I can remove the flowers, the leaves, and the hot glue later and use this tray differently.
Now that my leaves and my flowers are in place, we need to come up with an idea to encase them. What we're going to be using is some acrylic panels. I was at Michael's. They had some large acrylic signs that were 17 by 26 in size. I'm going to be cutting this acrylic piece so it fits right inside of my tray. So I got out my self-healing mat, a ruler, and an acrylic scoring tool. I ran my scoring tool over and over the same line so that I could create a deep cut. Once the cut was halfway through the acrylic, I positioned it at the end of my buffet and then pressed firmly to get a quick snap, which broke off the excess acrylic. Now, you've really got to commit when you do this because if you don't snap it really firmly, it could splinter and crack and you do not want that to happen. So you've got to go in there with some gusto and really make that a quick, sharp snap to break it off. So now I have my pieces and I actually have two pieces that I was able to get out of this one sheet of acrylic. Now is the time where I can peel away the protective covering over the acrylic to reveal a shiny, clear piece. So I bet you can guess by now what we're gonna do with this acrylic. We're going to place it over the top of our flowers. I added some hot glue to the tallest flowers that were on my tray. I placed the acrylic over the flowers and pressed it firmly into the glue. And now we are finished with our tray. You guys, look at how beautiful this is. I don't have anything like this. It really looks like those flowers are encased inside this tray. I love that it's clear so you can see all the details on them. I can place some items on here like a candle and it just enhances anything that you wanna put on top. Especially with spring on the horizon, this would be a beautiful, beautiful item to have around your house or to give as a gift. So let's revisit our Etsy piece. If you remember, it was $549. And after calculating all the costs that went into creating my tray, it was $35.68. That is a great price. We saved so much money over our inspiration piece. And if you wanted to reduce the price even further, you could use some dried flowers that you already have. We are going to be using this tray again because we still have that other half of the acrylic. So I wanted to do something with that. I was again online and I came across this gorgeous tray that's on the Alexandra Von Furstenberg website. This similar sized vanity tray with mirrored bottom is $485. Again, that is far too expensive, so we are going to get a similar look for less. We are going to paint the other half of our acrylic tray in some mirrored paint. I purchased this looking glass paint at Hobby Lobby. I took my acrylic piece outside and I sprayed it in this looking glass paint. I just need to paint one side of the acrylic panel. Once the first coat was painted on, I let it dry for 10 minutes. I came back and sprayed a second coat of paint over the surface of the acrylic. I let that dry for an additional 10 minutes and did a third and final coat. I just wanted to make sure that the entire surface was completely coated in the looking glass paint. Once I was finished painting it, I let it dry for one hour. Now that it's completely dry, I can flip it over and you can see that it is mirrored. It's not 100% like a mirror, it's much more dull, but I love the way that this looks. And if you wanted to get the mirrored look, just get a piece of mirror and cut it to the size that will fit inside your tray. So now this is what we're going to do. We are going to take this piece and slide it right inside the center of our tray. And now I have created an alternative look for my tray. It looks so similar to our inspiration piece. Of course, ours does have handles because we put it on earlier, which I like. I like being able to pick things up and move things around with handles. Our inspiration tray was $485. And after calculating all the costs that went into creating my tray, it was only $24.49. And you guys, I was able to get two looks with one tray. So if I want to take the flowers out and put the mirror in, I can completely do that. I got a 
double look for less on this item. I love both of them equally and we were able to get the look for less very affordably. My inspiration piece is from Etsy. I absolutely loved this pillow covering. It is so beautiful, so high-end. I loved the blue leaves on it. What I didn't love was the price of $48.99. I know that we can make one that's similar for less. So we already have our pillow covering, now we need to make some leaves. I was at Hobby Lobby and all of the ribbon was 40% off and I came across this velvet ribbon. I love the gorgeous shade of blue. We are going to be using this ribbon to create our leaves. So what I needed was a pattern. So I created a leaf pattern on Canva and I simply printed it off. If you want to use this pattern, you can. I will leave a link to the free printable in my description box. So all I did was I cut out the leaves and the stem and then I flipped my ribbon over and I put my pattern over the top. Then I got a pencil and I traced out the leaves and the stem. Then I took my fabric scissors and I cut everything out. I will say cutting out a lot of these leaves was really time consuming. So put on some fun music or put my videos on in the background so you can listen to them and watch them while you cut out these leaves. Once everything was cut out, I arranged them over the top of my pillow covering. I made sure that everything was in the right place and that I liked the design. I'm going to adhere the ribbon leaves to the pillow covering with some fabric glue. I got this at Hobby Lobby and all I did was I added the fabric glue to the back of the leaves and the stems and I just pressed it firmly to the pillow covering. You're going to want to make sure that the leaves are really well adhered so add a bunch of this glue because you want everything to stick well. Once everything was glued down I let it dry overnight. I filled my pillow covering with a down pillow insert that I already had. It just slipped it right inside and we are done you guys. Look at how beautiful this pillow covering is. It looks so expensive so high-end. I love the velvet leaves and stems. They look so luxurious. I think our pillow covering looks so similar to our inspiration piece pillow covering, but they are not similar in price. If you remember, our inspiration pillow covering was $48.99. So I'm going to calculate all the costs that went into creating my pillow covering, and it came to a grand total of $10.24. I think that that is such a steal for how gorgeous this is. And what I'm gonna do with this pillow is I'm gonna put it smack dab in the center of the pillows on my bed. It definitely elevates the luxurious look of my bedding. This was easy and affordable to do. I think we met and exceeded the challenge of taking this pillow covering and turning it into something beautiful. A way to immediately bring a touch of elegance into your home is with a gorgeous floral arrangement. And you've got to start off with a stunning container. I was browsing through the Horchow website and I saw this beautiful white basin container. It was a great size and I loved the gold accent on the bottom. Since we're on the Horchow website, you guys know it's going to be a little pricey. This container comes in at $485. We are going to do much better than that. A great place to find cheap pieces is at the clearance section. I always browse up and down the clearance aisle. You never know what you're going to find. I was at Home Goods and I went down this aisle and I found this wooden serving bowl. I love the shape of this bowl, the curved edges, and the size. The price was also fantastic at only $15. So I took my bowl outside and I sprayed the underside of the bowl and the sides in the white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I made sure that the bottom of the bowl and the edges were completely coated in the spray paint. Then I let it dry for one hour. After the hour was up, I flipped it over and I spray painted the inside of the bowl, the top edge and the sides once again. Once these areas were completely covered in the spray paint, I let it dry for another hour. Our inspiration bowl had some teeny tiny little feet, so we need to come up with some feet for our bowl. I went to Hobby Lobby and I headed down the hardware aisle 
and I found some small gold round geometric looking knobs. These are the perfect shape and size and they were only $3.99 a piece. Luckily for us, this bowl is wooden so I can drill some holes through the bottom. So I got my drill and I drilled three holes equidistant from each other on the bottom of the bowl. Then I took my knobs and I twisted them through the hole. Now I made this hole just the right size so that as I twist the knob through the hole, it was really tight. Once all the knobs had been twisted into the holes on the bottom of the bowl, I flipped it over and I added a washer and a nut to the top to make sure that everything stayed firmly in place. And that's it. We are done creating our dupe bowl. Look at how beautiful this bowl looks. I am in love with the shape of this bowl and the size. I love the way that it curves in and out. It's very shapely. The feet on the bottom add that sparkle and shine with the gold and the geometric pattern. This wooden bowl has been transformed into a timeless piece. Let's take a quick look back at our inspiration bowl. If you remember, it was $485. After calculating all the costs that went into creating my bowl, it was only $30, which is a great price. If you look at the Horchow bowl, there is a flower arrangement that goes along with it. However, it's not included in the cost of the bowl. So what we're gonna do is make a flower arrangement. You can buy floral inserts and then put them in your own container. So that's what this is. It's a orchid flower insert and it's $166, which is quite expensive. So we're going to make our own. We're gonna start off with some floral foam. Now you guys, I am a reuser of floral foam. I don't think there is anything wrong with floral foam with a little bit of holes in it. It still works out fantastic. So we're gonna put some floral foam in the bottom of our container and yes, it has holes in it, but yes, it will still work. Next step is to take some moss and spread that over the surface of the floral foam. I attached it to the foam with some floral pins. Now it's time for our orchid stems. I purchased mine at Michael's. They were $5.99 a piece, but I had a 30% off all regular priced purchases, which brought the cost down. I took five of these stems and I poked them into the floral foam at various places. Then I bent the flowers at the top. I love doing this because instead of having them go straight up, it adds a nice curve and it also makes the orchids look a little more natural. My orchid stems did not come with leaves, so we're gonna have to get a little creative and come up with an alternative. I think that magnolia leaves are similar to our orchid leaves in this instance. So I got a whole bunch of magnolia stems and I placed them at the base of the orchids. I had a whole bunch of these because I wanted to mimic our inspiration piece really well. I put them throughout the bottom of our arrangement this orchid arrangement is just what this container needed to elevate it to the next level. It took this container and brought it into a more elegant, a more classic look. This arrangement is timeless. I can use it all year long. I can put it in various areas of my home. I happen to be a lover of orchids and so this arrangement is right up my alley. Our inspiration orchid insert was $166, and after calculating all the costs that went into my orchid arrangement, it was only $35. So we saved ourselves a whole lot of money by duping this ourselves. I love the classic lines, the elegant look, and the timeless feeling it adds to my home. Cake stands are one of those items that I could never get enough of. So when I saw this beautiful cake stand on the Pottery Barn website, I knew I really wanted to dupe it. This is a Mason stoneware cake stand. It's classic, beautiful, and would be perfect for any party. The price of this cake stand is $59, and I know that we can recreate one for so much less. At my thrift store, they have this section that has chargers and trays and dishware. I found this wood charger that was the perfect size and shape, and it was only $3.99. So now we have the top of our cake stand. We just need to find a base. 
I had a hard time trying to find one that mimicked exactly our inspiration piece. But while I was at Hobby Lobby, I headed over to the vase section and I found a terracotta pot that didn't have a raised edge around the top. It was sleek, clean, it was the right shape. It was perfect for our base. Now I've got both pieces of my cake stand. So I'm gonna take them outside and I'm gonna spray them in the white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I made sure the top and the sides of the terracotta pot were completely covered in this paint. And then I moved on to the wood charger. I spray painted the top and the sides of this charger. Once everything was well coated in the white spray paint, I let these pieces dry for two hours. After two hours, I came back and I flipped everything over so I could do the opposite side. I sprayed the inside of the terracotta pot, and then I also sprayed the underside of the wood charger. Once these pieces were completely coated in the paint, I let them dry for another hour. Now, all we need to do is adhere these two pieces together. I added some E6000 to our terracotta pot and then placed our wood charger in the center. Once my two pieces were in place, I let them dry overnight. Occasionally, I like to add a protective coating over the top, and I know I'm gonna be using this cake stand frequently, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to spray it in a protective coating. So what I'm gonna be use is this Krylon Satin Finish Permanent Protective Finish. So I took my cake stand back outside and I sprayed it in this protective finish. Once I was finished spraying the protective coating on the cake stand, I let it dry for another hour. And that's it, you guys. We are finished with our Pottery Barn Dupe cake stand. Look at how fantastic this cake stand looks. I love using versatile pieces like this. You can use a cake stand like this for displaying decorative objects, a candle. Of course, you can use it to display your beautiful food. You could put a cloche over the top. I love having multi-purpose pieces of home decor. They are great on your budget. And I think that my cake stand looks almost identical to our Inspiration Pottery Barn cake stand. The thing that is not identical is the price. After calculating all the costs that I spent to create my cake stand, the price was $13.96. That's a great savings over our inspiration piece. I love this cake stand and I love the price. One of my favorite color combinations is blue and white. So when I came across this gorgeous blue and white high box container on the Horchow website, I knew I wanted to replicate it. The flowers on this container are so beautiful. They're very detailed, and I love the trim along the bottom and the gold feet. The original price is $360, but it is on sale right now for $270, which is still too pricey for me. So let's recreate it for less. The first thing that we need is a container. All the containers were 50% off at Hobby Lobby, so I picked up one that was similar in size and shape. Our inspiration piece had a beautiful blue and white chinoiserie design. I found some napkins at Home Goods with a very similar design. And this package was on clearance. It was only $3, which is a steal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these napkins and we are going to Mod Podge them onto our container. So what I did first was I measured out the napkin to make sure that I got the correct size. Now one of these napkins is not going to fit around the entire container so I needed two different sections. So I got my self-healing mat and a rotary cutter out and I cut these two sections to the exact size that I needed to put on my container. Next I removed the two ply portion on my napkin. I peeled that away. The reason why I'm doing this is because air can get trapped in between those layers and it will make it bubble up and we want our napkin to lay flat. I took a sponge brush and some Mod Podge and I painted it onto our container. Next I took my napkin and I laid it over the top of the Mod Podge. The downside to having only one layer of napkin is that it is very delicate and it will tear easily. So I had to make sure that I didn't pull too hard on the napkin or press it aggressively to the container. I continued to add the Mod Podge to my container and then press my napkin to the container. I 
got my kitchen scraper tool and I pressed out any extra air bubbles that were trapped underneath the napkin. Doing this will help the napkin to lay smooth. Once both sections of the napkin had been adhered to the container, I let everything dry for one hour. Then I came back and I added the top layer of Mod Podge. Again, I just took that sponge brush and the Mod Podge and I painted it over the top of the entire surface of the napkin. Once everything had been covered in the Mod Podge, I let it dry for another hour. The Inspiration container had this intricately designed gold trim along the bottom. To mimic that, what I'm going to be using is some metal ribbon that I purchased at Hobby Lobby. This is left over from other projects, but it's going to work so well for this project. To measure it, all I did was wrap it around the container, then I took my clippers and I cut it to size. Right now, this metal ribbon is silver, but that is going to be an easy fix. We will change that in just a minute. But before we do that, we also need to find some feet. Again, I was at Hobby Lobby. I found so many great items there on this shopping trip. I found this package of wood poles. These are a great option for the feet because they are the perfect size and shape. They came in a package of eight, so I even had some left over. Next, we're gonna take the four feet and this segment of metal ribbon outside and spray it in some gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I painted the feet first. I made sure that the top and the sides were coated in this gold spray paint. Then I moved on to the metal trim. I sprayed it in the gold spray paint as well. Once both of my pieces had been 100% coated in the gold spray paint, I let them dry for one hour. We are going to add this metal trim to the bottom of our container with some hot glue. I put some hot glue on the trim and then pressed it to the container. I simply continued to add the hot glue and press the trim to the bottom of the container until the entire circumference was wrapped in this metal trim. In order to keep this metal in place while it dried, I took two rubber bands and I placed them over the trim. These rubber bands will hold and mold the metal trim in place. To attach the feet to my container, I got some E6000 and I added a dab of this glue to the bottom of the feet and then spread them out equally on the bottom of the container. Once the feet were in place, I let everything dry overnight. The next morning, I flipped my container over and I removed the rubber bands. And now we are completely finished with our high box duped container. This turned out so beautifully. The feet are perfect. I love the gold trim and the napkins. What a fine. It looks so beautiful. It doesn't have quite as much detail as our inspiration container but I love the blue and white subtle details on here with the birds and the flowers. It's just so pretty. I think this container is timeless, it's classic, and it's a decor piece that can be used in a variety of different ways. So let's place my high box container next to our inspiration container. I think they look so similar, but one similarity that they do not have is the price. After calculating all the costs that went into creating my container, it cost me only $13.99. That's a great price. I can definitely live with spending that amount of money to get this beautiful piece. I love all flowers, but orchids really do have my heart. I've got them all over my house. I have a weakness for those flowers. So when I saw this gorgeous floating orchid arrangement on the Lux Decor website, I really wanted to recreate it. And then I really wanted to recreate it even more when I saw the price of $839.50. And that is the sell price, you guys. <laughs> so um, yeah, we'll be recreating this one for much, much less. So let's go ahead and start off by choosing a container. Our inspiration container was really long. I couldn't find one that was quite as long, but I did locate one that was very similar at Michael's. It was oval and very thin, so it was the right shape. And I had a 40% off coupon, which brought the price of the container down. 
Now I need to find some similar rocks. So while I was at Hobby Lobby, I found some bags of rocks. These beautiful white rocks were already affordable, but they were 40% off, which brought the price down even further. So I picked up three bags of those. And then of course I need my orchids. Now I like the orchids at Michael's and the reason why is because they are very beautiful, but they are affordable. Each stem is $6.99 and I always use either a coupon or I wait till the flowers are on sale, which brings the price down. So I picked up four orchids at Michael's. And that's all the items we need to create this arrangement. So I'm going to start off by adding the rocks to the container. I poured them into my container one bag at a time. I spread out the rocks evenly in the container until the container was about three quarters of the way filled with the rocks. An easy way to keep your flowers in place is by using the tape grid method, but because this container is so thin, we are going to be doing the tape line method today. So I just took some lines of tape and I ran them across the opening at the top of my container. Now that my lines are in place, I can get my orchid stems. And what I did was I bent the stem and then I pressed them sideways into the rocks. We want to put them in at an angle because the orchids almost lay down in this arrangement. So I started at the ends and placed the orchids on either side. And then with the two orchids in the center, I still bent the stem and tucked them into the center of the container, still kind of laying them down at a diagonal. Once my orchids were in place, I fluffed the flowers out so they looked similar to my Inspiration Orchid arrangement. And that is it for this orchid arrangement, you guys. It was so easy to do, but look at how stunning this arrangement is. I am absolutely in love. The only difference between my orchid arrangement and our Inspiration Piece orchid arrangement is that theirs is a bit longer but I still think that mine is absolutely stunning. I'm just so happy I decided to make this one. So if you'll remember, our Inspiration Orchid arrangement was $839.50. After calculating all of the costs that went into creating my orchid arrangement, it was only $40.17, which is a savings of $800, you guys. That is huge. And I think that my arrangement is equally as stunning. As you saw, this dupe was so easy. So if you're a novice DIYer and you want to get a beautiful floral arrangement, this project would be a great place for you to start. I was on the Etsy website and I saw this adorable clock. It was so whimsical and unique. I loved the chinoiserie birds. It comes in at a price of $78, which isn't outrageous, but I think that we can recreate one for less. So I headed to the thrift store in the hopes that I could find a similar clock and I found one. This clock is almost an identical replica and the price on mine was only $6.99. The orange stain on this clock needs to be changed. And then there's the hardware. There is a pull on the drawer that's copper and the handle on the top is a darker antique color. They do not match, so we are going to change those as well. First up, there is a latch that's on the side, so we are going to remove that so we can paint our clock. I got my drill and I took that latch right off. I began to remove the decorative pull off the drawer. It was nailed into the drawer, so I thought maybe I could just kind of shimmy it off, and I broke it. <laughs> I just, it snapped right in half. So at this point, all I could do was get my needle nose pliers and pull the rest of it off. Once I had the knobs off, I got a putty knife and I jammed it underneath the other part of the hardware and just pried it up. So out of necessity, we will eventually be getting a new knob for the drawer. I didn't know my own strength on this one. All right, so now that we have those parts taken care of, what we're gonna do is remove the clock mechanism from our clock. It had some spring hinges, so it just popped right out. 
Because I learned a very valuable lesson on the door pole, we are not gonna take anything else off. We are gonna leave the handle and the hinges on the clock. So we are going to tape those off. So I just got some blue painter's tape and I taped off the hinges and the handle. I got some paper and I put it inside with a little drawer and then got some blue painter's tape and put it over the top because we wanna protect the velvet inside. Now everything's protected, it's time to paint it. Now you guys, <laughs> we are going out on a limb today. Uh, we are painting this clock black. Yes, black. <laughs> it's not white, it's not gold, it's black. We are going out of our comfort zone. So I took my clock outside and I began to spray it in this black semi-gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. You guys, the minute I started spraying this paint, my stomach dropped. <laughs> I was like, oh, I hope I'm making the right decision. But I had already started, so I just jumped right in and sprayed the entire clock in this black spray paint. I did the front of the drawer and all around the clock. I did the top, the sides, the bottom. Once it was completely covered in this black spray paint, I let it dry for an hour. Now that everything's dried, we can remove the blue painter's tape. So I just pulled that off of the hinges and the handle and the drawer. Now we're going to put some blue painter's tape back onto the clock. I put it around the hinges and the handle because what we're going to do is get some gold rub and buff and a rag and we're going to add this gold rub and buff to the metal hinges, handle and hook. I rubbed this rub and buff on the hinges first. I made sure that they were fully covered in the rub and buff. Then I moved on to the handle. I got the base of the handle itself. I made sure that all of it was covered. Once the handle was finished, I moved on to the latch and the screws that we had previously removed. I put the rub and buff all over the latch and the screws. And the nice thing about using the rub and buff is that it's more like a wax. So you don't have to wait more than five minutes to have it dry. So after that time was up, I could remove that blue painter's tape to reveal these beautiful gold metal hardware pieces. I like the way that these look now. Our metal pieces look antiqued and they match color wise. Our inspiration clock had a beautiful chinoiserie bird design. Now we are not gonna go that bright, but what we are gonna do is keep it classic. So I had this book of scrapbook paper that I purchased from Ross a while ago. Inside was this black and cream damask or damask, however you say it, print with a beautiful sheen on it. And these are the scrapbook pieces that we are going to use to cover our clock. I measured the front of my clock to get the correct size. Then I cut my paper to get the correct circle cut out. I placed the paper on the front of the clock, opened it up and traced the circle so I got an exact size. Then I cut out the circle from the paper. Once I was done, I put it back on the front of my clock and it was a perfect fit. Then I simply cut the scrapbook paper to fit on all the other surfaces on my clock. To adhere the scrapbook paper to my clock, I'm going to be using some Mod Podge and a sponge brush. I painted on the Mod Podge on the front of my clock. Then I took my decorative paper and put it in the Mod Podge. Then I got a scraper tool and I pressed the paper firmly to the wood to make sure that it laid flat. And also this will remove any air bubbles that might be trapped underneath the paper. Then I moved on to the drawer. I did the same thing. I got the Mod Podge, I painted it all over the drawer front, and then smoothed it out with my scraper. Next step is to do the sides. So I just repeated the same process. I got the Mod Podge and the sponge brush and I painted it on the sides. I put the rectangular piece on the top first and then moved down to the second rectangular piece on the bottom. Once those had been pressed firmly to the side, I flipped it to the other side and did the exact same thing over there. I added the Mod Podge first, I placed the paper into the Mod Podge, then pressed it firmly to the clock with the scraper. Now all of the decorative paper has been Mod Podged onto my clock. Once it was in place, I let it dry for one hour. Now it's time to paint on the top layer of Mod Podge. So I simply just got my sponge brush on the Mod Podge and I painted a liberal amount of this all over the surface of the clock. 
Now, if I did get any Mod Podge on the clock itself, on the wood, not on the paper, I wiped that off. I wanted to keep the Mod Podge on the paper and not on the clock. Once I had this top layer of Mod Podge coated all over the surfaces of the paper, I let it dry for three hours. Now it's time to replace the broken pole. I had a leftover knob from a previous project a long time ago. It is the cutest little knob. It looks like a flower. It's gold and white, and I think it will look fantastic on this drawer front. So I got my drill again, and I drilled a hole right in the center of the drawer front. Then I took my knob and pressed it through the hole. On the back, I put a washer and a nut to hold it in place. Now we can reattach the latch on the side. I got my drill and I just screwed that right back into place. The final step is to put the clock mechanism back into the clock. This is something that I probably should have tested out first. I don't even know if this works, so let's keep our fingers crossed that it does. I got my battery and I put it into the clock mechanism and thankfully it works, you guys. So not only did we get a great price on this clock, but it's a working clock. So that's a definite score. I just popped it right back into the front of my clock and it sprung into place. I am beyond thrilled with the way that this adorable clock turned out. We've definitely went out on a limb choosing a darker color palette but I think the black coordinates so beautifully with our decorative paper. The gold hinges, the handle, and the latch add an elegant touch. And I think the new knob is a beautiful accent. Let's look back at our inspiration piece. This clock from Etsy cost $78. After calculating all the costs that went into creating my clock, the grand total was $12.99. What a fantastic price and a great savings over inspiration piece. I love the way that my clock looks. It has an elegant feel and it's personalized to my taste. I was browsing through all the wall art on the Paragold website and I came across this gorgeous cascading floral wall art. These flowers are in a shadow box frame. It is simply stunning, but the price is stunning as well. Can you see that it's $1,338? Yeah, that's going to be too much for me, so we are going to dupe it for much less. This time we are going to be using this shadow box frame that I purchased from Ikea. The size is really great. It's a 50 by 50 centimeter. It's also the right color, so I knew it would be perfect for this project. Now we need some flowers to go inside. I was at Hobby Lobby and I went down the dried floral section and I came across these beautiful white flowers. They're the perfect size, the perfect color, and I love the way they look. I got two different sizes of these flowers, and I was in luck because that day, all of the florals at Hobby Lobby were 40% off. These flowers are so cool. They're not wood, they're almost like foam, which is gonna be great in a shadow box because it's gonna hold its shape really well. Okay, so next we need a mat to go in the back of our shadow box. I was in the clearance section at Hobby Lobby and I came across these giant pieces of mat. I found one that was cream, which is going to be perfect for the color scheme, and the price was right at $3.74. Now we have all of our items. So the first thing we need to do is remove everything from our shadow box. Then I took the paper that was inside of the frame. I'm going to be using this as a template so I can get the correct size square for my mat and then traced out the correct size with a pencil. I got a rotary cutter and I cut the square out with the rotary cutter. Now I have the exact size that I need to put inside my frame. Next, I'm gonna take my flowers. What I need to do is cut the flowers away from this wood stem. So I got some floral cutters and I simply just snipped all of the flowers away from the stem. I did this with the large ones and the small ones and spread them out. I did a dry run with the flowers first. I placed them on top of my mat and I arranged them just the way that I wanted them to be so they were in the right spot before I glued them down permanently. To adhere the flowers to my mat, I'm going to be using some hot glue. I simply took the hot glue and I put it on the back of the flowers 
and then press them to the mat. I tried to mimic my inspiration art piece by putting several flowers in close proximity at the top and then spread out the flowers further as I got down to the bottom of the mat. I did this with all of my flowers until I was satisfied with the way that it looked. Now it's time to put everything back inside the shadow box, but before we do that, I need to remove the plastic coating that's on the plexiglass. Once that was off, I could put it back in the shadow box and then place my dried floral art inside. And finally, I replaced the backing. Now that we're done, I put it on top of my fireplace mantle. I love the way that this looks, you guys. It looks so high-end, so expensive. I love the monochromatic flowers and the shadow box frame, how they coordinate so beautifully together. You could use this in so many different areas of your home. I think it looks very similar to our inspiration piece. However, I have to say I do like mine better. I like the contrast between the cream flowers and the white frame. And I believe that my flowers look more realistic. Mine is a little bit smaller than the Perigold one, but if you remember, theirs cost $1,338. And after calculating all of the costs that went into creating my floral shadow box art, it was $39.83. That's a huge savings of our inspiration piece. I love the way my cascading floral art turned out and we recreated it for a very affordable price. I love giving my bedding a fresh new look for the different holidays and seasons. It can get pretty pricey every now and again, so I try and do it affordably. I like switching out my pillows. So when I saw this gorgeous Greek key pillow on the Paragold website, I really wanted to recreate it. Especially because I already have two pillows on my bed that have that Greek key design, so I knew that this would be a great addition. Now, the pillow on the Paragold website is $288, so we are going to recreate it for so much less, you guys. It's gonna blow your mind. Okay, so what we're gonna need is a pillow covering. At Hobby Lobby, they have such a huge variety of sizes and colors and textures of pillow coverings. I selected this 18 by 18 size white pillow covering and it was only $3.99. Our inspiration pillow covering had a darker colored Greek key design. That's not really gonna fit in with my design style, so I am going to lighten it up a bit. I found this Greek key ribbon at Walmart. It's the perfect size and shape and the perfect color for me. I love white and gold, so this is right up my alley. What I'm going to do with my ribbon is I'm going to cut it into four segments. I measured the ribbon first and then cut 45 degree angles on both ends of the ribbon segments. Once my first segment was cut, I used it as a template to cut out the remaining ribbon segments to size. You can, of course, sew this ribbon to the pillow, but I'm gonna take the easy way out today and I'm gonna use some fabric glue. This fabric glue is from Hobby Lobby and I'm just going to add the fabric glue to the back of the ribbon. I added glue down the entire length. I made sure that there was an ample amount of glue on the ribbon and then placed it along the edge of my pillow covering and then smoothed it out. This will keep it stuck in place. I continue to do the exact same steps with the remaining three segments of ribbon. I simply added the fabric glue to the back of the ribbon and place them around the perimeter of the pillow covering. Once all of my ribbons were in place, I let it dry overnight. I placed a down feather pillow insert inside of my pillow and that's it, you guys, we're finished. Look at how stunning this ribbon is on this pillow. It looks so expensive and high end. It is the perfect addition to my bedding right now. It coordinates beautifully with the Greek key design that I already have going on my bedding. If you're looking for a cheap, easy way to freshen up your bedding in a hurry, this is definitely a great option for you. So let's remember that our Paragold pillow was $288. After calculating all the costs that went into creating my beautiful Greek key pillow, it was only $7.96. That is such a great deal on this pillow. 
If you wanna swap out your pillows and give your room a fresh new look, this is a great way to do it. I'm always looking for decorative bowls or containers so I can create flower arrangements or display my decorative pieces inside. I saw this gorgeous decorative bowl on the Wayfair website. I love the size, the shape, the color, and the handles on the side. What I didn't love was the price of $163.99. So yes, this is beautiful, but I think we can make an equally stunning bowl for so much less. So the first thing we need is to find a decorative bowl. While I was at Ross, I came across this stunning glass bowl. It was the right size, the right shape, and the right price. It was on clearance for $8.99. So all we need to do to this bowl now is change the color. So I got some paint. This time I'm using a Paint Plus Primer. This is still a Rust-Oleum white gloss spray paint. I painted around the entirety of the bowl. I got underneath the bowl, I painted the sides and inside as well. Once the bowl was completely covered in the spray paint, I let it dry for two hours. Do you remember earlier how we were at Hobby Lobby and we found those hanging knobs? Well, this is the time where we're gonna pick them up because we need two of them. They are the perfect size and shape to put on either side of our bowl. Now they are the wrong color. We do need to paint them white. So I took them outside and I sprayed them in the same white Rust-Oleum spray paint, the Paint Plus Primer. This is a great paint to use on metal pieces because it is rust preventative. Once my knobs were completely covered in the spray paint, I let them dry for two hours as well. Now that everything's white, it's time to attach my knobs to my bowl. What I'm going to be using is some E6000 and some hot glue. I added the E6000 to the back of the knob and then put some hot glue on the knob as well. The E6000 will hold the knob permanently and securely to the container. The hot glue will hold it temporarily so that the E6000 can dry. I put the knobs on either side of my bowl and then I let them dry overnight. And just like that, we are finished with our Look For Less bowl. This one, in my opinion, looks most similar to our inspiration piece. They look almost identical. My bowl looks just as expensive as our inspiration piece. It's gorgeous and classy. I can see charging $163 for my bowl. However, that is not how much mine cost. Decorative pieces like these bowls are so fantastic. You could put a flower arrangement, you could fill it up with candles, you could put some seasonal decorative items in here. Because it's white, it's neutral, so it will go with all kinds of different seasons and decor styles. I love the modern lines of this bowl, which can update and make your space feel refreshed and refined. We are going to stick with the Paragold website and we are going to dupe another one of their very expensive high-end pieces. This time it's going to be this handmade ceramic jar. The blue, white, and gold is stunning and I love the way that the paint is marbled. While I was at Ikea, I came across this plain old ceramic pot. I thought it was going to be perfect as far as size and shape goes, so I scooped it up. So now we have the center jar part. We need to find a lid and a base. So while I was at Hobby Lobby, I headed over to their wood rounds. I've used these several times before and I picked up a package of two small wood rounds and then I moved over and I found one that was just one size up and I picked up that wood round as well. The detail around these wood rounds are going to be perfect for our jar because it adds a little bit of flair. The knob that we're going to be using on our lid is actually one of those doll heads that I have used in previous videos. They are from Michaels and I had some left over. What I've done with these doll heads in the past is I've used them as feet. I added feet to a thrift flip container and then also a decorative box. So now that I have everything, it's time to paint. We're gonna start off by painting the lid wood round and the actual ceramic pot itself. I'm gonna be painting them in some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint 
You may be wondering why I'm painting the container since it's already white, but I want these two whites to match. The IKEA container is a little off-white, so painting it will make everything cohesive. Once everything was coated in the white spray paint, I let them both dry for one hour. If you've been with me for a while, you know that I love to hydro dip, and this project was screaming out for a hydro dip technique. So we are going to do that. What I did was I got a container, just a large bucket, and I lined it with a garbage sack, and then I filled it almost to the top with water. The reason why I'm adding a garbage sack to my bucket is for ease of cleanup afterwards, and also because the paint, the leftover paint, will stick to the garbage sack and not to my bucket. All right, so now that everything is prepped, we are going to get our paint. I'm going to be using the White Gloss Rust-Oleum Spray Paint, but also a Krylon Paint Plus Primer in the color Royal Blue. What I'm gonna do is spray this paint into the water in two second increments. So I sprayed the white for two seconds and then the blue for two seconds and then the white and the blue and the white and the blue until it formed a bullseye. I did this probably 20 times. That way I had a really great marbling effect. Once I had enough paint in there, I took my gloved hand and just swirled it around. Then I got my ceramic pot and I dipped it into the paint. The paint will cling to the container or whatever object you put into the paint. Once the paint had coated the entire container, I pulled it out. I love the swirls on this. It is unique and one of a kind. I repeated this process for the lid. I just simply sprayed the white and the blue paint in alternating colors. Then I took my lid and I dipped it into the paint, pulled it out. Look at how cool that swirl is, that bullseye is on the top of the lid. It looks so cool. This painting technique worked beautifully for this project. Once both of my pieces were coated in the paint, I let them dry for one hour. Now we need to paint the base and the lid, and we're gonna do that with some gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I painted both of them so they were 100% coated in the spray paint. Once they were fully coated, I let them dry for one hour. After my lid was dry, I took some blue painter's tape and I put it around the edge, and then I got a styrofoam plate and put that over the top. The reason why we're doing that is because we need to paint the circumference in the same gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. So I painted that right around the edge of the lid. Once it was coated in the spray paint, I let it dry for one hour. Now that everything is painted, it's time to assemble our decorative jar. I'm going to be using some E6000. I put the E6000 on the top of the wood base. I made sure that there was a lot of the E6000 all over the surface, and then I placed my container over the top. And then I took the knob and I added some E6000 to the bottom of the knob, and I put it directly in the center of the wood round lid. Then I let both of these pieces dry overnight. Now all I need to do is take the lid and pop it right over the top of my decorative jar. Look at how awesome this jar looks, you guys. Look at how unique. I love the painting technique. Check out the lid. Wow. I had so much fun making this too. And can you believe that this started out as a ceramic pot from Ikea? I love the way that it's been transformed. It looks so similar to our inspiration piece, but it was so much cheaper to make. Do you remember how much our inspiration piece cost? It was $145. After calculating all the costs that went into creating my beautiful decorative jar, it is $19.49. That's a great deal. We saved so much money. It looks beautiful, unique, one of a kind. I'm so happy with the way my recreation turned out. Do you ever see a piece of home decor and think to yourself, how is that so expensive? Well, I was browsing on the Horchow website and I came across these boxes. And if I wanted to purchase all three of these boxes, it's going to cost me $1,400. Um, I'm sure these boxes are very high quality, but I will not be paying $1,400 for these boxes. But I know that this is going to be an easy recreation. 
So let's get started. In the party section at Hobby Lobby, they have these white boxes. They come in three different sizes. These boxes were very high quality and very sturdy and you know that I love a good box. And I love it even better when it has a great price. The large was $4.49, the medium was $3.49, and the small box was $1.49. To get the gold trim on the lid, what I'm going to be using is some gold washi tape. I purchased a package of 15 rolls of washi tape at Target. Inside this package was a roll of gold washi tape. I took the lid off my box, I put the tape on the far end of the lid, I pulled the tape straight across and then pressed it right to the rim of the lid. I went around the entire circumference of the box. Once I got back to my starting point, I took a pair of scissors and snipped off the tape and then pressed everything together one final time. I repeated this process of adding the tape to the rim of the lid on all three of my boxes. This was such an easy process, it literally took me a few minutes to do. Okay, here are my stack of boxes. Look at how similar my boxes look to my inspiration boxes. They are almost identical. You can barely tell them apart. They are the same size, the same shape. The gold on the lid is a fantastic match. This really is a beautiful and versatile piece of home decor. Now you can use these just as is. You could put them on a nightstand. You could use these as risers. It's Christmas time, so you could wrap a bow around these and use them as a decorative element underneath your tree. There are a variety of ways that you could display this trio of boxes. Now for the final cost. After calculating everything that went into creating my boxes, it was only $10.47. You guys, that is such a huge savings of our inspiration piece, and how easy was this to do? Plus, I think my boxes are just as beautiful. I had a request from one of my fabulous subscribers to make a wall art piece similar to the one that I found on the Pottery Barn website. It is this palm leaf shadow box wall art. This is such a cool piece of art. It would go with a lot of different styles and designs. I love the size. However, it is $399, which is quite expensive, and I know that we can recreate it for less. So the first thing that we need is a frame. I headed to my local thrift store. They always have such an amazing variety of frames there. I found one that had a thin frame and it was square, it was the perfect size and shape, and the best part is that it was only $5.99. What we want to use is the frame and not the art that's inside, so we're going to remove the art and the mat from the frame, and then I carefully lifted out the glass so that we were left with just the frame only. I don't know how long it was at the thrift store, so I washed it with a damp cloth to make sure it was nice and clean, so when we spray paint it, the paint will adhere to the frame. I'm going to be using some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint to paint our frame white. I took it outside and I sprayed it in the spray paint. I made sure that the entire frame was covered in the spray paint. I did the front, the sides, and painted the inside of the frame as well to make sure it was all one cohesive color. Once it was completely coated in the paint, I let it dry for two hours. While the paint is drying, this is the perfect time for us to get started on our palm leaf. We are going to make ours out of some poster board. I picked up mine at Target. They were only 99 cents, which is cheaper than in the Dollar Tree, so that's a great place to get your poster board. What I'm gonna do with my poster board is cut strips out of it. So I got my self-healing mat and I put my poster board over the top. Then I got a pencil and a ruler and I marked out one and a half inch wide segments. Then I got my rotary cutter and I cut the poster board into strips. One poster board was large enough to give me all the pieces that I needed to create this palm art. Once I had all the poster board strips, I cut them into various lengths. I did a seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11 inch long strips. 
Once all of these segments were cut, I folded them in half. Then I cut the top with scissors into points. I repeated this process with all of my poster board pieces. Now it's time to create our fan. So I took the smallest seven inch segment first. I put some hot glue in the center, pressed it together, and then I put some hot glue on the outside. Then I took my second folded segment of poster board and pressed it firmly to the first segment. I repeated the process of hot gluing the inside and the outside of the folded poster board pieces in ascending order until I had half of the fan hot glued and connected together. Then I got started on the second half of the fan. Again, I took the shortest seven inch segment first. I put some hot glue on it and then I just hot glued all of the other poster board pieces together. This time I divided it up into three different segments. That way when I put it all together, I could move everything around and make sure that it was all nice and evenly fanned out. We need to create a background that's similar to our inspiration piece background. I have this fabric, it's leftover fabric. It's actually from my dining chairs and it is the perfect match to our inspiration piece. So what I'm gonna do with my fabric is put it over the self-healing mat and then take the back of the frame and place that over my fabric. Then I got a ruler and my rotary cutter and I simply just cut around the backing of the frame. This will give me a perfect square that will fit right on top of the backing. Once my square was cut out, I got some hot glue and I put it along the edge of the backing. I kept the hot glue to the edges, and that way we didn't have any lumps or bumps in the center of the fabric. I continued to add the hot glue to the edges and then pressed the fabric into the hot glue. Now it's time to adhere the fan to the fabric. So what I did was I just took some hot glue and I put it on the back of the first half of the fan and then I pressed it firmly to the fabric. I added a bunch of hot glue in various places on the backing of the fan. You don't want this to move around, you want it to be stable. So adding a decent amount of hot glue will hold everything in place. Then I took the additional segments for the other side of the fan and added the hot glue to the back of those and placed them in the right spots to create the other half of my fan. I did cut some additional segments of poster board for filler just in case I needed it. So I did add a couple extra little fan pieces in there to make my palm leaf look nice and full. Now that the palm leaf is in place, we need to add a stem. So I just cut a rectangle and just rounded the top, got some hot glue, added it to the back and pressed it to the fan. Now in my inspiration piece, if you zoom in really close, you can see there's like some frayed pieces of either fabric or paper. So in order to recreate that, what I'm gonna do is get some cotton balls and I'm just gonna pull them apart, add a little bit of hot glue to the fan and then put the cotton ball right over the top. I think that this mimics our inspiration piece fantastically. Plus as a bonus, it is hiding all of the places where the fans are connected. You never wanna see the mechanics of how everything is stuck together. So these cotton ball pieces are a great way to hide all of that. Now that our palm leaf art is done, all we need to do is put it right back into the frame. I flip my frame over and put our art right back in the center. One thing that we are not going to be doing is putting the glass back over the front. We don't have the space for it because of the 3D palm leaf. Our inspiration piece was a shadow box. Ours is just going to be an open frame. We will have our 3D palm art stick out which is just fine for me. I actually really like it this way. So that is one liberty that we are going to take over our inspiration piece. And that's it, we are done. Look at how fantastic this palm art looks compared to our inspiration piece. I think they look so similar. They're similar in size, the leaves are the same, the backing's the same. I just really love the way that this turned out. And the best part is finding out the price differentiation from our inspiration piece to what I made. So let's calculate my expenses. In total, it cost me $14 to create my palm leaf wall art. I think that that is a steal. 
Finding the frame from the thrift store was a great jumping off point to create our wall art. For $5.99, it kept everything in budget. Using the poster board was cost efficient and all the other little pieces didn't add up to much. So if you think you can't get a high-end piece of wall art, you can head to your thrift store. That's a great place to start. I think you guys know that I love floral arrangements. I have them all over my house and I just think that they elevate a space so much. One of my favorite ones are orchids. I love orchids. And so when I saw this gorgeous orchid arrangement, I really wanted to recreate it. This arrangement is from the Paragold website. I love everything about it except for the price of $475. That I do not love. And I know that we can recreate one for so much less. So the first thing that we need is some orchids. Orchid stems can get pretty pricey, but the ones at Michael's are $6.99 a stem, and I always use a coupon. For instance, this time I used a 25% off coupon, which brings the price down. So I got my three orchid stems there. Then I headed back over to Hobby Lobby, and I picked up some floral foam. Now you guys know that I like to reuse my floral foam, but every now and again, <laughs> I've got to get some new floral foam because my old stuff has been worn. So I picked up a package of floral foam and then also a package of moss. I purchased a very similar rectangular glass container a few years ago at Home Goods. It is an identical match to our inspiration piece, so we are going to be using that. I'm going to lay everything out now. I've got all the flowers, the container, the foam, the moss, so let's start arranging. We are going to begin with our floral foam. I took a block and a half and I'm going to cover it in the moss. I wrapped it around the floral foam and I attached it with some floral pins. Once these pieces had been covered in the moss, I placed them inside of my container. We want our orchid stems to look just like our inspiration piece, so what I'm gonna do is take an orchid stem, place a stick next to it, grab a handful of moss, wrap it around the stem and the stick, then get a segment of raffia. I'm gonna wrap this around all of these items, the stem, the stick, and the moss, and then I'm going to tie it into a knot. Once I was finished with this process, I snipped off the excess raffia. Then I repeated this process on the other orchid stems. I poked the orchid stem and the stick into my floral foam in similar areas as our inspiration piece. Once these three stems were in place, I curved the orchid stems so they would mimic the orchids from the Paragold arrangement. I did not have any orchid leaves, but what I do have are some magnolia leaves, and in my mind, they look very similar to orchid leaves, so we are going to use those instead. So what I did was I took my magnolia leaves and I poked them into the floral foam at the base of each of the orchid stems. Again, my goal was to put these leaves in similar areas as our inspiration piece floral arrangement. And that is it. Oh, we are done with our arrangement. Look at how beautiful and how big this is. We're gonna have to back up a little bit. Isn't this stunning? I just think it's so classy and elegant. Not only is this a beautiful piece, but let's put this next to our inspiration piece and I will show you how similar they are. There is virtually no difference between these two arrangements. I am amazed at how well this turned out. Now this is a little more expensive than the other pieces that we're making today, so let's calculate all the costs. After everything had been added up, the price was $38.19, which is not bad. I still think that that is a great deal, but it is a little more expensive. So if you wanted to keep the cost down even more, you could just see if you could find some less expensive flowers. I love the way that this looks. I am so excited to display it in my home. By duping this, we saved over $400 and I couldn't be happier with the final arrangement.
A few of you have requested that I do some coastal DIYs. So our next Pottery Barn dupe is going to be recreating this coral snack bowl. This is very nautical and whimsical. It would be a fun way to display some snacks at an outdoor party. This piece is $34.50, so let's recreate it for less. At the thrift store, I found this coral bowl. It was plastic, it was blue, it was a great shape, and it was a great price. The price was only $2.99. In order to get that craggly coral feel, we are going to add some detail to our coral bowl. So what I got was some Dollar Tree bath salts and some Mod Podge. I painted the Mod Podge onto the coral bowl and then I sprinkled the bath salts right over the top. I just continued to add the Mod Podge to the bowl and then sprinkle all of this bath salts over the top. The bath salts will stick fantastically to the Mod Podge. So once I was done with the inside of the bowl, I flipped it over and I did the exact same thing on the underside. I put the Mod Podge on there and then I sprinkled the bath salts over the top. I did leave the bottom of the bowl plain because we want to be able to set it down on a table flat. Once this was finished, I let it dry for an hour. And then I looked at it and I wanted to have a little more detail on there. I needed to have some more coral. So I decided to do a second layer over the top. So I just simply added some more Mod Podge with my sponge brush. I just painted it over the top of the original coral bath salt pieces and sprinkled the bath salts over the top. This makes the coral design even more exaggerated. So once I was done with the inside, again, I flipped it over and I did the underside. Once all of my bath salts were in place, I let it dry for three hours. As an alternative to bath salt, you could use some little pebbles or sand. That would work great too. Now we need to paint our bowl white. So I took it outside and I sprayed it in the same white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint that we've used in all of our projects thus far. I made sure that the bowl was completely covered in the spray paint. I did the inside, the outside, and underneath the bowl. Once it was 100% coated in the spray paint, I let it dry for two hours. <laughs> you guys, look at how cool this bowl is. It's got that jagged, uneven feel that real coral has. And if you're worried about this stuff coming off the bath salts, it's on there really good. Between all the Mod Podge layers and the spray paint, it's stuck on there really good. So you don't have to worry about the bath salts flaking off all over the place. I absolutely love the way that this looks. You could put some decorative pieces inside. You could put a candle inside. You could put an anchor shell, some nautical decor in there. You could also mimic our inspiration piece and put a glass bowl inside and fill it with some food and put it out at a summer party. How fun would that be? I added up all the expenses and the total cost to create my coral bowl was $10.25. That's a great savings. Do they look absolutely identical? No, but this one definitely has the spirit of our inspiration piece. So for all of you nautical lovers out there that are looking for some coastal design ideas, I hope this works for you. And our next dupe is going to be a blue and white floral arrangement. I found this one on the Wayfair website and it comes in at the price of $82.99. That's a lot, and I know that we can make one for so much less. So the first thing that we need to do is get a container. Target has some great containers. They have a big variety, so I bought one there. Some of the florals that we are going to be using are from Ikea. They have a huge variety of florals there, plants and all kinds of flowers. So I picked up some white ones there. And the other flowers that I'm going to be using are from the Dollar Tree and just other ones that I have in my stash at home. So the first thing we need to do is create a tape grid. I got some tape and I made two lines horizontally and two lines vertically across the top of my container. Now I'm simply going to take my flowers and put them in the same location as the flowers in our inspiration piece. This is an easy way to recreate a floral arrangement, especially if you're a novice floral arranger. All you need to do is find an inspiration piece 
and copy the placement of the florals. You guys, I love the way that this floral arrangement turned out. It was so easy to do. This took me maybe 20 minutes to put together in total. My floral arrangement looks so similar to the Wayfair floral arrangement, but mine came in at a fraction of the cost. The Wayfair arrangement was $82.99. After calculating the cost of my floral arrangement, it came to a grand total of $20. This looks so pretty on my nightstand and it ties the rest of the blue and white that I have in my room together. And as a bonus, in the future, I can take these florals out and use them in another project and use this vase in another project as well. So this is a very versatile arrangement. Floral arrangements are perfect in home decor because they can bring in a color scheme, they can add freshness and vibrance to a room while also adding an elegant touch of the outdoors. I really enjoy using table runners. I use them all over my house. I think it warms up those tables and it also gives you a place to display some decor. So we are going to dupe this runner that I found on the Kirkland's website. This is a very simple but beautiful table runner. It costs $39.99. Again, that's not outrageous, but I know that we can make one for less. So I went to Ross and I found a table runner there. It was so pretty. I loved the cream color and the design on the front was so pretty. But when you flipped it over to the other side, it was plain. So I knew that this was going to be a perfect blank slate to create a runner. And it was a great price at only $8.99. All right, you guys, this is going to be one of the easiest dupes that we have ever done. What I'm gonna do is flip my runner over to the blank slide. I'm going to get some ribbon. This is a beautiful ribbon that has some lace detail on the outside. This is from Michaels. And the third thing that we're gonna need is some fabric glue. I took my ribbon and I put it at the end of the runner. I added fabric glue to the back and pressed it firmly to the table runner. I am going to be using a ruler to make sure that my ribbon stays in the center. We don't want it to get ski wampus as we go down the runner. But all I did was I just continued to add that fabric glue to the ribbon and press the ribbon onto the runner. I did this the entire length of the runner. Once I got to the end, I took some fabric scissors and I trimmed the ribbon. And then I added the last bit of fabric glue to make sure that everything stayed in place and then I let it dry overnight. We are done with this dupe, you guys. How easy was that? But now we have a double-sided runner. So when I get sick of one side, I can flip it to the other. I can use the decorative side or the more simplistic side with one beautiful runner. I placed my runner in the center of my breakfast table and I love the way that it warms up this table. The velvet fabric and the lace ribbon add an elegant touch. I only needed three things to create this dupe. The runner, the ribbon, and the fabric glue. So as a grand total, my cost was $13, which is a great savings over our $39.99 Kirkland's runner. If you're looking for a super simple and affordable project, this runner is right up your alley. You can customize it to your own taste. You can choose a different ribbon. You could choose a different color runner. You could take this in any direction you wanted that would fit in with your design style. Some of the best thrifted pieces are items that you did not expect to find. Because I had been scouring the Pottery Barn website for a while, I knew what was on there. So when I came across this gorgeous glass pitcher, at the thrift store, I knew it was, first of all, it's simply stunning, but secondly, it mimicked a picture that I saw on the Pottery Barn website. The picture on the Pottery Barn website is $99, and mine is only $2.99. I scooped this picture up so fast, not only because it's beautiful, but because I don't have anything like it. Look at how pretty the handle is on this one. And I actually like mine better because of the spout. It has a beautiful dip and curve to it. 
This would be a gorgeous way to display a specialty drink at a party, or you could just add some of that filtered water and put some lemon slices in it. The difference between the Pottery Barn pitcher and my pitcher is that theirs comes with a stirring stick and I am going to have to use a spoon, <laughs> which is just fine with me. In order to save that much money, I didn't have to pay $99. I paid $2.99 to get mine. So when you're at your thrift store, just look around. You never know what you're gonna be able to find. Our next dupe are these candlesticks from the Wayfair website. The reason why they caught my eye was because I thought they would be perfect for this time of year. I love the rattan and the price isn't too outrageous. It's on sale right now for $56.99. That's okay, but I know that we can make some that are just as great for so much less. So first up, I need some candlesticks. I thought I would try my luck at my thrift store and I found some that were almost identical. They were similar in size and they had the right shape. The best part is that they were only $1.99 a piece, so we are already off to a great start. Now these candlesticks are pretty dirty and they are a little beat up, so what I'm gonna do is sand them down and wash them off. That way I have a nice smooth surface to paint. My inspiration piece candlesticks had some decorative trim on the bottom, so I wanted to mimic that in some way. While I was at Hobby Lobby, I found these rectangular bag of six pieces of plywood. They didn't have any squares, so I had to get the rectangles. We had to improvise just a little bit, but that's okay. We're gonna turn these rectangles into squares. So what I did was I got a ruler out and a pencil and I measured the correct size. Then I got an X-Acto knife. I cut along the pencil line. I needed to do a few passes with the X-Acto knife. Because the plywood is so thin, I was able to easily cut through the wood. I did this technique with two of my rectangles to create two squares. Now I have all the pieces I need. So I took everything outside and I sprayed it in some white gloss or Soleum spray paint. This is the same spray paint that we used on my box. Once the plywood squares and the candle holders were 100% saturated in the spray paint, I let them dry for two hours. To attach my plywood squares to my candle holders, I used some E6000. I added the E6000 to the bottom of the candle holders and then I placed them in the center of the plywood squares. I did this on both of my candle holders. Once they were in place, I let them dry for three hours. What really drew my attention to these candle holders in the first place was the rattan detail in the center. I don't have anything like that and I thought it would be perfect for summertime. I had a hard time finding some similar rattan to our inspiration piece. But when I was at Hobby Lobby, I went down the ribbon aisle and I came across this poly mesh it was the right color and in a similar geometric pattern. Luckily for me, all the ribbon and mesh was on sale for 40% off, so we got it for a great price. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut strips out of this poly mesh. I measured the size I needed and then cut out long strips. These sections are wide and long enough to fit all the way around my wood candle holders. I got some hot glue and I added the hot glue to the candle holders and then pressed the mesh strips around it. I simply continued to hot glue the mesh to the candle holder around the entire circumference. Once I was finished adhering the mesh to the first candle holder, I moved on to the second candle holder. I did the exact same thing. I simply hot glued the poly mesh to the center of the candle holder and continued around the entire circumference of the candle holder until it was completely covered. And that's it. Now we are finished with our beautiful dupe candle holders. Look at how pretty those are. I absolutely love the way that they look. I think our candle holders look so similar to our inspiration candle holders. They are unique and custom. One additional detail that I'm going to add to my candle holders is this Dollar Tree jar. I just took the lid off and it fits perfectly right on top of my candle holder. So now I have a safe way to put my candle inside and burn it without burning down the wood candle holder. So this looks so beautiful. I'm so happy that we decided to do it.
let's remember where we started from. This was from the Wayfair website and it was on sale for $56.99. After calculating all the costs to create my two candle holders, it was $9.35. So we saved over $47 over inspiration candle holders. That's a big chunk of change. I'll happily keep that. I'm delighted with the savings and I'm delighted with the way that our candle holder dupes turned out. I love the look of a cloche. It is a beautiful way to highlight or draw attention to a piece of decor. On my kitchen island, I have a centerpiece. I placed a large glass cloche over several bottle brush Christmas trees and wow, does it make a statement. I purchased this large glass cloche at Home Goods years ago and I have not been able to find another one like it since. So we are going to have to make our own today and we're not only gonna make one, we're gonna make two. Our inspiration piece cloche is from Home Displays. This is a large size, it's a 12 by 16. I love the bell shape and the knob. This cloche comes in at a price of $199. And I know that we could make one for much less. What we're going to use are two large vases. I purchased these vases from Home Goods a long time ago. They were $14.99 a piece. The size is fantastic and it has that similar bell shape where it curves in a little bit and comes back out. These are what we're going to use to create our cloches. Now we need a knob. I was thinking hard about what I could use as a knob and I had two apothecary jars that I was not using and the lids on top of these apothecary jars were perfect. I'm going to hot glue these lids to the bottom of the vase. So I flipped my vases over, I got some hot glue and I ran a line of hot glue along the bottom rim of the lid and then placed it right in the center of the upside down vase. Now, don't be nervous about adding hot glue to glass. I'm going to show you how easy it comes off. I pulled the lid off and I just peeled that hot glue away. The hot glue is a temporary solution for me. If you wanted to make it permanent, use some E6000. I glued the second lid to my second base and just like that, we have created two stunning cloches. They are so much larger than our inspiration piece. The knob at the top is striking and more detailed, and overall, these cloches look luxurious. Let's calculate the cost of everything that went into creating our cloches. The vases were $14.99. I'm not really sure how to calculate the cost of the lids from the apothecary jars, so we're just gonna round that to $5 a piece. So in total, each cloche cost me $20 which is a huge savings over our inspiration piece at $199. And I like mine so much better. They are larger, they are more detailed, they are stunning. We are adding an extra detail to the lids. I have a navy blue ribbon and a mirrored star. I threaded the ribbon through the mirrored star ornament, wrapped it around the lid, and tied the ribbon into a bow. Now this piece coordinates with my color scheme and the added detail themes it into Christmas. These cloches are going to highlight the nativities that I have here in the living room. I have two side tables on each side of our couch and I'm going to add some nativities to these side tables. For us at Christmas time, it celebrates the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ. So it's important for us to have that be a focal point in our home. So what I did with my nativity was I spread the pieces out on the table, added two figures to the top of two cupcake stands. My mother cross-stitched these beautiful sayings and pictures that I framed and added to the nativity as well. In the center, I have an octagonal marble tray. On top of the tray, I placed a small cake stand and to the top of the cake stand, I put our holy family and then positioned our duped cloche over the top. That mirrored star is in the perfect position. It hovers right above the nativity scene. I duplicated this display on the display on the other side table. I have a larger nativity scene. I placed the pieces in similar areas and set the cloche over the top of the baby Jesus. 
These nativity scenes look high end, but they highlight what is most important to us during this Christmas season. If you've been following along my Christmas decorating journey, you know that we have created a whole bunch of wreaths for our decorations this year. So I figured why not add a wreath to this room as well. We are going to dupe a Horchow wreath. It is absolutely beautiful. This wreath has gorgeous ornaments, beautiful leaves, and the ribbons are stunning. In fact, the only thing I do not like about this wreath is the price of $628. However, it's your lucky day because it's 30% off right now. So it's only $439.60. But that is still far too much for me to pay for a wreath, so we are going to make our own. The first thing we need is a pine wreath. I purchased this pine wreath at Walmart. I also gathered up ribbons, berries, ornaments, and frosted leaves. First, we're gonna add the frosted leaves to this wreath. I simply pulled the frosted leaves away from the center branch, and then I took a branch from my pine wreath and wrapped it around the leaves. I continued to add these leaves to the wreath around the entire perimeter. I placed them on the edge so that it would look similar to our inspiration wreath. Next, I took a variety of gold ornaments and pearlized ornaments and I added them to the wreath. I'm simply going to attach them to the wreath with the ornament hook that's on top of the ornaments. I wrapped it around the wire branch and it will hold those ornaments in place. We are going to veer off just a little bit from our inspiration piece because we want to customize our wreath to our specific color scheme. So the ribbon that I'm going to use is cream with gold stripes. I folded it up so I would get equal segments and then cut the ribbon. I took the ends of the ribbon and put them together. Then I got a segment of floral wire, wrapped it around the ends of the ribbon to create a loop. Then I placed several of these ribbon loops around my wreath. Next, we're going to add some gold berries and blueberries. We're using blue because that's our color scheme. I simply peeled away these berries from the main stem and then wrap them around the wire branch on the wreath. Once I was finished positioning my blueberries, I did the same thing with the gold berries. I simply pulled each segment of berries away from the stem and then wrapped them around the branches on my wreath. Our inspiration wreath had these sticks that were poking out around the edge of the wreath, so we're gonna do the same thing. I have some sticks that I purchased at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to snip off shorter pieces of these branches and then place them sporadically throughout my wreath. Now at this point, our wreath is looking pretty good, but it needs one more additional detail. On the inspiration piece, it had some spiky ornaments and I found some similar ornaments at Hobby Lobby. So I added three of these spiky ornaments at different areas around my wreath. You guys, I love the way that this wreath turned out. It looks so good. It's very similar to our inspiration piece. It has those same unique details. I certainly haven't made a wreath like this before and it makes me feel so happy that we saved a ton of money. After calculating all the costs that went into creating my wreath, it was only $26.73. That is a huge savings over our inspiration wreath and I like mine just as well. I added a command hook to the center of my mirror, then placed my wreath over the command hook. This wreath is the perfect addition to this mirror. I love the way that it looks. I have two sconces on this side of the room and two sconces over there. And to theme them into Christmas, I took some Merry Christmas ribbon. I purchased this at Hobby Lobby. I wrapped it around my sconces and tied it into a bow. I love adding ribbon to my light fixtures. It's a cheap, easy way to make them feel festive and of course, bring in your color scheme. I have another large Christmas tree in this room. This room is actually where we do Christmas morning. So it's important that this tree look very festive. We're gonna add some ribbon to our Christmas tree. I'm going to be using the same wide white ribbon that I used on the other tree. I'm also using some navy blue and gold ribbon. This is from Hobby Lobby. And then another ribbon that I'm going to be using in here is a snowflake ribbon. 
So I stacked these ribbons on top of each other and then made a loop. To hold it in place, I'm simply going to get a branch from the tree and wrap it around the ribbon. Then I simply just continue to make loops and add this ribbon down the entire length of the tree. Now that all of my ribbons are in place, we are going to add our ornaments. I have a huge variety of ornaments. I added poinsettias, large white flowers, gold berries, blueberries, and white leaves. I love how full this tree looks. It's definitely dressed to impress and makes this room feel luxurious. Another luxurious addition that we're adding to this tree is at the base, I have this plush tree skirt. This tree skirt is similar to the tree skirt in the family room. They both have pearls and so do the stockings. So they all coordinate together. I'm thrilled with the way that the decorations turned out in this room. They are classy and elegant. It's also very streamlined in here. I haven't over decorated and that makes it a very restful and peaceful room. I have the pieces highlighted that I want to have highlighted like our nativity. The tree is a standout feature in this room. The wreath adds elegance as it's attached to our mirror and the nativities are front and center. The dining room is one of my favorite places to decorate during Christmas. It's right off the foyer, so it's the first room that people see when they walk into my home, and so I wanna make a big impact. We're gonna start off by decorating the buffet table that's on the back wall. I wanted to make a standout feature, so I have some tall vases with some pine topiaries at the top. To create these topiaries, I simply got a styrofoam ball and added some pine branches as well as some frosted branches to the styrofoam ball. And then I placed it at the top of the vase. To add some sparkle, I have a crystal snowflake that I added to the center. And to coordinate with that snowflake, I have some snowflake ribbon. This is from Hobby Lobby. I took this ribbon, tied it into a bow, and then attached it to the styrofoam ball. The way that I'm attaching everything to the styrofoam is with these boutonniere pins. These are fantastic because they're long, but they also have a pearl on the end of them. So it's a decorative way to attach everything to the styrofoam ball. I purchased these in the wedding section at Hobby Lobby. Icicles are also another one of those themes that I have throughout my decorations this year. I have some icicles on the fireplace mantle in the family room. I also have some icicle ornaments hanging from the fireplace mantle in my bedroom. I purchased more of these icicle ornaments from Ross and to hang them, we are going to get some fishing line, tie it to the ornament and then wrap it around one of my boutonniere pins and then poke the pin into the styrofoam ball. Now my icicles can hang mysteriously around the styrofoam ball. I did two on the side and then one in the center that hangs below the crystal snowflake. Another simple but impactful element that we are going to add to the vase is a bow. I have this navy blue ribbon that has a gold edge. I wrapped it around the vase and tied it into a bow. I found these adorable glass Christmas trees in the dollar spot at Target. They were only $3 a piece, so I picked up four of them and I added two to either side of my display. I have a larger glass Christmas tree that I placed on top of a cupcake stand. This gives this tree added height, but also adds dimension to my display. I found the cutest village house at Home Goods. I knew it would be perfect in here because another thing we have going throughout the house is these wintry village houses. So I placed this village house on top of a rectangular marble tray 
This house lights up at night and it feels so magical. To enhance this wintry feeling, I have a print that's behind the house. This print is from my website. It's a gorgeous snowy village scene that makes this tabletop feel wintry and magical. I will leave a link to this print in my description box and don't forget to use code LISA10 to get 10% off everything on my website. Well, we are done with this display scene. I think it looks so pretty. It definitely makes an impact and makes a great first impression as you walk into my home. This grand table needs a grand centerpiece. So we're gonna start off with layering two runners. I have a plain cream runner, and on top of that, I am going to add a navy blue animal print runner that I purchased at Ross. This runner has a soft velvet fabric, and it brings in that navy blue color scheme to the centerpiece. I think it's time for another dupe. We are going to replicate the mantle garland that we saw underneath the wreath from our first dupe. This mantle garland is just as stunning as the wreath. Again, I love the details that they have added to this garland. The ornaments, the ribbons, everything is stunning. And the price is stunning too. We can try and recreate it for less. We are going to create our garland from two swags. I purchased these swags a few years ago at Bell's. Now the best thing about these swags is that they already have some ornaments and pine cones on them, so already we're off to a great start. We are going to add a few more ornaments to the swags. I'm going to be using those same gold and pearlized ornaments. I'm going to attach them to the swag by simply using the ornament hook that's at the top of the ornament, and I'm going to wrap those metal hooks around the pine branches. Next, we're going to be adding those blue and gold berries Again, I simply peeled these berries away from the stem and added them to our swags in various areas. I also took a few more of those frosted leaves, pulled them off the center stem, and added them to the swag. Again, we are going to be taking some creative liberties because we want our swag to coordinate with our color scheme, so we're going to be using that cream and gold striped ribbon. I took segments of this ribbon, wrapped them into loops, took a segment of the floral wire, wrapped it around the ribbon, and attached it to the swags. I'm also going to be using pieces of those sticks that I purchased at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to snip off segments of these and place them into the swag. Now that our swags are beautifully decorated, we're going to turn them into a garland. I placed both of these swags over the runner on my dining table, and at the top of each swag is a loop. So I took a pine branch from one of the swags and threaded it through the loop on the second swag. Now it looks like I have one gigantic garland and it fits perfectly in the center of my table. I think our garland looks pretty similar to our inspiration piece. Again, we did take some liberties with the color scheme, but the size and the shape and the decorative elements we added are very similar. After calculating all the costs that went into creating my swag, the grand total was $32.23, which means we saved hundreds of dollars by creating this ourselves. Over the center of the garland, I'm going to add a marble riser. Adding risers is a great way to add height to your display. I did want to bring in a little bit more of that navy blue color scheme, so I figured I could do that with some fabric. While I was at Hobby Lobby, I got some beautiful velvet navy blue fabric. I only needed half a yard, so it was very affordable. I folded this plush navy blue fabric in half and draped it over the marble riser. To the top of the riser, I'm going to add Santa's sleigh. And of course, every sleigh needs to be pulled by a reindeer. I have this beautiful gold reindeer that I placed in front of the sleigh I attached two gold beaded garlands to the deer and strung them all the way to the sleigh. Santa's bag also has to be in the sleigh, so all I did was get a cream canvas bag 
and fill it with polyfill. And then I have these adorable little presents that I added to the top. They are spilling over the bag into the sleigh and then onto the riser. This is also a great opportunity to enhance that color scheme. I tie these presents with some navy blue ribbon as well as some white and gold ribbon. I wanted to add something decorative to either side of the sleigh. My original idea was to add some of those grapevine trees to some cake stands, but I felt like it was just too casual for the space. So I decided last minute to switch it up and create two more tall topiary vases. These vases are actually taller than the vases that are on the buffet, but I did the exact same thing with these. I took a styrofoam ball and wrapped the pine branches and the frosted branches over the top. I added a crystal snowflake to the front as well as the snowflake bow. And to the sides in the center, I added more of these icicle snowflake ornaments. I attached everything with those same boutonniere pins and then wrapped a blue ribbon trimmed out with gold around the vase and tied it into a bow. These tall vase topiaries make this tablescape feel so grand. They make a huge statement and of course they coordinate beautifully with the topiaries in the vases on the buffet. Just like the other lights in my home, this light fixture is going to get a ribbon. This ribbon is the Merry Christmas ribbon. I wrapped it around the top of the light and then tied it into a bow. On this back wall over here, I have two large white ginger jars. I hung a star on the lid and then added some frosted berries, pine cones, and a sparkly gem to the star. And of course, this room would not be complete without another wreath. I have a very similar wreath to the other wreaths that I have created here in this room. I have this pine branch wreath with the bottle brush wreath in the center. I have a similar wreath in my family room on the mirror, on the shelves in the family room. I hung two of these wreaths on the mirror in my bedroom. And of course you saw that duped wreath that we placed on the mirror in the living room. So what I did with this wreath was I added those two wreaths together, took two picks that I made from frosted leaves, white leaves, gold and blue berries, and then took that Merry Christmas ribbon, tied it into a bow and attached it to the center. We are hanging this wreath with some fishing line because I love the way that it hovers and you don't know how it's connected, but it is connected to a command hook that is above the mirror. Using the fishing line makes this wreath look like it's floating. It is a little early in the season to dress our table, so that will be coming later on as we get closer to Christmas. But this dining room is completed, it's decorated, and it looks so festive. The rooms that we decorated today coordinate so well with the other rooms that we have decorated in our home. The dupes that we made today were great additions to the decorations in these rooms, and it makes it even better knowing that we saved so much money by making them ourselves. We were definitely able to create affordable pieces of home decor today that look expensive. If you like this video and want to see more like it, I would love to share those decorating tips and ideas with you. Thank you so much for watching.